Hi everyone, Dave here from Big Pans People. Tonight we're going to be cooking a paella de mariscos, a seafood paella. The ingredients I'm using are some peas, some tomatoes, some fine green beans, some mixed peppers, some onions, uh, bomba rice, mixed seafood, king prawns, live mussels and half fresh prawn tails. Uh, we also have some white wine, olive oil of course, some vegetable stock and tomato passata. And there's some garlic and finally some sample grass to finish off. Seasoning wise, we're going to be using paella seasoning or currant and sweet pimento, uh, which is actually already in the seasoning, but we just have to like to add a little bit extra. It gives it a very authentic Spanish flavor, if you like. So I'm going to start off by lighting the burner over here. And um, as you can see, well, you may not be able to see this on screen. I've got a, a pan that's going to serve approximately, well, it can serve up to 10. Tonight, we're assuming that we're going to serve around five or six people. Um, under that we have a little burner. And this kit's available online, you can buy this sort of thing for about £35. Have a look on Amazon. Um, I've just adapted a stand here so I can show you on a desktop, but it does come with legs generally as well. So, without further ado, let's get the pan burning. As you can see from the, the bottom right corner, hopefully you'll be able to see what's going on all the time. I'm just going to light the flame there. You'll see that the pan's got some salt in it already. That's just like a sprinkling of salt. What that will do is, it's going to bring out quite a lot of the flavour in the uh, fish and obviously in, in the finished dish you want a little bit of salt in there just to give it, you know, set off the other flavours. So the first thing I'm going to do is add my olive oil, just get the pan nice and hot. I've got about half a glass here, I'm, I'm guesstimating really as to how much I'm going to use. So in the meantime I'm just going to pour it in like this and you're going to see it sit in the bottom of the pan like that. There we go, just get it all round, give it a nice coat. And that's just about right. I think that's probably just about the right amount. That was a good guess of mine. So that's that one finished with. And the first thing we're going to do once that oil's got itself a little bit hot is I'm going to pop in the seafood. Now, the mixed seafood that I've used here is a frozen bag, which we get directly from our fishmonger. Who, uh, I'm going to mention them actually GCH Fishmongers in Bedford. They're fantastic guys. They do the best fish. They're award winning. And they know, know their stuff inside out. And they look after us with uh, fish on a large scale. So when we buy and we go out and we cook on a large scale at events, we only use the best sort of frozen and fresh fish that we can find. I've got some fresh going in here as well. Right now, I'm gonna, I think that pan's nice and warm, so I'm gonna pop in this mixed seafood. There's about 500 grams here, um, and it's come from a, a bag of mixed seafood, which you can buy frozen. The reason I'm using frozen for this is because basically, unless you buy each individual item in it, you can't buy fresh mixed seafood, um, as far as I can see. So, here we go, 500 grams going in. I'm going to in first. It looks like there's quite a lot of seafood. It does actually reduce down quite a lot, the, the frozen mixed seafood. I'm going to add in some large king prawns. They're coming in next. Um, I'm going to wait just a little while. Now you can, you can choose pretty much when you put the prawns in. I've got some decorative prawns. I'm going to put these in just a little bit later actually tonight, just considering my options. You can leave them later. They only need to be pink all the way through to be cooked. Um, and the later you leave them, the, you know, the, the bigger they'll stay and the more flavour, the juicier the corn will be. So I'm going to leave those just for a little while. Um, whilst I've got this seafood going, once it's got it nice and soft and it's been in the pan for a couple of minutes, I'm going to add the next ingredients, which are going to be the onion and the garlic. As you can see, the seafood's cooking nicely. We've got a nice bubble going on. I've adjusted the levelling of the pan. It's quite important to keep it level um, because obviously when your water goes in, you want it to sit level. It's, it's probably the hardest part, actually, of setting up the equipment, especially when we're on uh, uneven surfaces. We have to adjust at the length of the stand that they come with quite, quite a lot to uh, get the pans level. Not so difficult on this work. So this, um, this little stand that I've adapted actually has little adjustments on it, so I've made a few micro-adjustments. Right now, 
that's cooking well, so um, in goes the onion. There's two small onions here. And I'm also going to put in the garlic. Now, I said about half a head, so probably five or six cloves of garlic. Um, garlic with paella is not necessary, actually. It's a bit of a preference. The recipe I'm cooking here is a combination of, of several recipes that we've seen our Spanish friends cook. Um, I'm sure there are aficionados who will tell you there's a right way and a wrong way, but actually, I don't think there is. I think with this, I've seen so many variations. You can kind of do whatever you like now. Um, the big faux pas that some people will tell you is that the Spanish don't put chorizo in a paella, uh, and it's true, they don't. It? However, when we're cooking for the English, we do put chorizo in. Uh, and that's because people like it, basically. So it might not be 100% authentic, but a good chicken and chorizo paella, obviously I'm not going to put it in here, this is a seafood dish, so it certainly wouldn't go in this one. Um, but yeah, in a chicken and chorizo paella, we would use a, a good American chorizo. So that's why I'm getting the garlic in. I'm just going to let that sit for a little while. Get those flavours cooking, get them bubbling nicely before I add the next ingredients. So now I'm going to add in my tomatoes. Here I've got just a, a punnet of uh, baby tomatoes which I've chopped quite finely. Each tomato is just sort of three or four pieces and I'm going to put them in the hole like so. And I'm also going to add in my mixed peppers at this point. There's three mixed peppers there, one of each colour. Again, variations on this recipe may not use mixed peppers. Um, some use chopped tomatoes, some use uh, tomato passata, and I do actually have some tomato passata, about a carton's worth. But I'm going to add to this just to give it a little bit more richness. In fact, I'm going to put that in just now. So here goes my passata. I may only have to wait a few minutes, probably three or four minutes, just to let those bits mix together, let the flavours combine, before we can add in the green beans to soften those up. As you can see, a lovely combination of colours going on. So now I'm going to add in the green beans. Uh, we have just one pack of green beans, again, straight off the supermarket shelf. They're fresh, not frozen. In they go. And I'm just going to mix those in quite gently because we don't want to be spilling over the edges if we can help it. And once they've blended themselves in, softened down a little bit, then I'm going to add those lovely king crumbs. So here you'll see that I'm stirring now. Obviously there's a, an unwritten rule about never stirring a paella. That, that is true to an extent, and I, I'll come to that one after the rice in. Uh, that's the point when you, you don't stir the paella. I'm just going to turn the heat down a little bit there. It is bubbling away quite extremely. So we're just going to let it simmer. Um, it's important at this stage not to give it too much heat. You don't want it to burn. And uh, actually, to contrary belief, you do want it to stick to the pan a little bit. Again, that'll be the rice. And then when I come to put that in, I'll explain the reasons. So right now, we're at the point where 
pretty much all of our vegetables are in. Um, the only thing we haven't got in there at the moment are peas and for garnish at Sampire grass. Um, but right now, we're going to add half a glass of white wine. That's quite a large glass. That's going in like that. Just to give it a bit of extra flavour. And I'm going to add these big king prawns. There's about 300 grams here. And they're frozen, as you can see. Give it all a little bit of a stir. Let the prawns get in the mix. That's cooking away nicely, those prawns are softening up, defrosting in there. Again, they'll add a little bit of liquid because of the water they've retained. But we do need quite a lot of liquid in there. We're going to add some more in a minute. So the next thing in, I'm going to put this in now just so some of these ingredients soak up the flavour. Now this is a paella seasoning. It's basically a colourant, which is saffron derived. And we, I'm going to use a fair amount of this. Now, people often ask us, do you use real saffron? And the answer is, quite frankly, no. And the reason is not just because it's expensive, which of course it is, but also that real saffron can actually taste a little bit medicinal. Um, and if you go to Spain, you will notice that actually, wherever they cook paella, it's very rare that you'll see anyone using saffron, on a, certainly on a seafood dish. It's, uh, if you have paella Valencia, um, you'll find some toasted saffron, as Omar and Boy's recipe will tell you. So I've got a good few teaspoons of earth of seasoning going in there. Um, but we find that that seasoning there is a great flavour. We use that on our large paellas, and this one going in now is sweet pimenton. Um, again, I'm, I'm kind of guesstimating the amounts. You can see find how much I'm putting in, roughly a few teaspoons of each. And then I'm going to stir that in. It's a, very, it's a lovely smoky flavour. And it really adds to the dish. So whilst you don't have to use this, it, I highly recommend it. I mean, we use this for all so many different dishes. Um, sweet pimento. This is made by La Chinata, And you can find it online. So I'm going to stir those in right now. I mean, you'll see the colour come out from the first one. The paella seasoning gives everything this lovely yellow colour that the saffron would give. In fact, the saffron wouldn't give such a strong colour as the seasoning does. Again, we've still got plenty of fluid in there, plenty of liquid. And that's exactly what we want. We want lots of liquid. And uh, I've got about 700 mils to actually, it's a litre of stock there, I think I've got, which I'm going to put in here. I'll run through the ingredients and the quantities again at the end for you. So there'll be a full summary of what's in here and uh, how much of everything you need. And we'll, I'll try and work out some rough costings as well. As I say, this will feed, um, well, I'm hoping it will, it'll, tonight you see, it's only got to feed six, but it probably would stretch to eight, maybe ten people. It's a ten person pan, um, but these, I've got a couple of big fellas on serving tonight, as well as their girlfriends, my stepdaughters. So I know they eat a lot and they're going to enjoy this. So now I'm going to put the rice in. Uh, sorry, the, the stock. I'm going to put the stock in first before I put the rice in. If you want to get some liquid. Now you can do it either way around actually. You can put the rice in first. Um, there's no right or wrong way of doing this. I'm going to put the liquid in first simply because I want the rice to sit in amongst the other ingredients. And if you put the rice in now, you have to stir it. And because I'm using Spanish bomba rice, pump rice, which is this stuff here, um, what you find is that actually if you stir it, it will become starchy. 
and you don't want that to happen, you don't want it to be too thick. So once the rice is in, you can't even touch it basically. It's got to be one of the last things in um, with just a few other ingredients that will sit on the top while the water simmers down. So first of all, in goes some vegetable stock. As I say, there's about a litre going in here and that's going to make it really swim. But don't worry because that rice, once that goes in, that's going to soak up all of this liquid. So that's my stock in. In fact, I'm just going to put a little bit more water in there. Just to get it up a little bit higher. Put it up there. And now the key is the rice now. The hardest part of this is to get it evenly spread amongst the pan. So, how do you think is the best way of doing it? Um, when we do it on a big scale, we follow it in a cross type pattern just to kind of evenly spread it. And now I'm going to use my hand to just try and distribute it evenly. And as I say, at this point, this is where we don't really want to stir the paella at all if we can help it. Um, again, I'm calling it paella sometimes, paella other times. It depends. If, you, if you're Spanish, of course, it's paella. That's the name of it. It's a Spanish dish. Well, actually, some research that I found recently suggests that it isn't. Um, but that's another story altogether. But in terms of pronunciation, paella, paella, we're English, we do it in, in Britain, we do it our style. There's no necessarily, it may not be the master's way of cooking, it may not be the master's way of pronouncing paella, but ultimately it's a very tasty dish and it derives from the Spanish dish that we all know, in particular this one, which is the seafood. So that's my rice in. There's Probably um, just a little bit over 500 grams in there. I'd say probably about six, 700 grams. And apart from that, the only last things to go in as we are up to our liquid. I'm just going to flatten that rice down so I'm not stirring. I'm just making sure it all sits in the liquid so we don't get that crunchy nutty on the top. And that way it will all absorb liquid. So that's the last of the fluid in. That's all of the rice in. And it leaves me now with just fresh prawn tails. As you can see here, I've got about five, I think, in here. So they're gonna go in in a pattern. One, two, three, four, five, like so. I also have some beautiful fresh mussels, light mussels have been washed. They've been cast on ice, so I'm now going to place these in quite strategically at different points. In go the mussels. Obviously the rule with mussels is that if they're broken, don't put them in. If they don't open when you're cooking them, don't eat them. Throw them away. But I can actually bury these in the rice now. And I've got about, I don't know, 15, 20, maybe a few more than that, 25. There we go, so that's my muscles in. Last but not least, I have a handful of peas. I'm running out of room. We could have done with a slightly bigger pan for this one. So I'm hoping it's not going to overflow once the rice takes up that liquid. In theory, it shouldn't do. So my peas are going in on the top. Again, distribute them as evenly as you can. There's not a huge amount of pizza. They're more for decoration than anything else. So I've got one. And now we wait. So we're going to let that to sit and simmer until the water reduces down. And in about 45 minutes' time, 40 45 minutes, you'll see uh, hopefully what resembles my hand.
So here we are back with the pony some 35 minutes later, so a little bit ahead of schedule. Um, probably another five minutes on here, but before I finish cooking, I'm going to add the last essential parts um, to complete the dish, which is a little garnish. Now here we've got some samphire grass. Um, again, this came from GCH, our friends at the fish market. I'm just going to sprinkle this across the top. Um, this is it complements any fish dish. It's lovely stuff. Um, it doesn't need me to raw. It doesn't really need me cooking through. So I'm going to sprinkle that on the top there, like so. Um, there's finally some lemons. I'll put a few in the edge, just to garnish. And then just cast a few on the top. So just a few points to mention, um, rice, firstly rice. The re we haven't stirred this one, we've used bomba rice, the Spanish paella rice, and uh, I explained earlier the reasons for not stirring it. The other, the other reason that I didn't give is that actually it sits, it drops to the bottom and it sits on the bottom of the pan. Uh, and as it cooks, whilst it's, it's in position, as long as you don't stir it, you also end up with this lovely caramelised layer of rice on the bottom of the dish, and the Spanish refer to it as sopa wrap and uh, it's, they, they consider it to be the best part of the paella. Um, if you stir it, you wouldn't get that. And also, it would be quite stodgy. Um, when we cook on larger events, we don't use this rice, we use vaporised rice. And the reason for that is it gives you a longer serving window. And um, obviously, we're cooking on a big scale, sort of pans up to 100 people at a time. Um, and sometimes we're, we're serving more than that, 200, 250, 300. So we, we need a bigger amount of time to serve. If you use bomba rice, the problem with it is it will go stodgy. So we don't use it on site. We use, we use a vaporised rice, um, which retains itself for longer, can absorb more water without going stodgy, and that's the reason for that. Still tastes great. It's, it's not quite small grains, it's slightly larger grains. And uh, yeah, so that, that's about it really. Those are your paella de mariscos, and it's all about ready to serve. So I'm gonna turn off the gas at this point. There we go, and that'll probably stop it bubbling. And on that note, from Big Pants People, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, we're also going to run another video, frequently asked questions for anybody that would like to hire us for an event. We do cook for up to 300 people at any time. Um, slightly variations on the recipe. This is a seafood paella, we do lots of other paellas, and they're all pretty delicious. We've got plenty of client testimonials to, to tell us exactly the same, tell you exactly the same. So watch this space and we'll be back with further videos. Thank you for watching.